America's number one crime fighter. I'm Batman. <laughs> Where are they? Relax, everybody. I'm here. Batman! Hey, guys. My name is Shay, and welcome back to another Hacker Labs. If you remember, in our previous series, we made a fully functioning Iron Man helmet and a hoverboard, but this time we're back with everybody's favorite superhero, Batman, and we're making Batman's cowl. Everybody might know Batman's cowl as his mask, and his helmet, but it's so much more than that. And we're gonna see if we can get it fully functioning. We have four weeks to complete this project. I think we're gonna be able to get it done on time, but first, let's meet the team. We're all here today because we want to get creative and make... What about Batman's cowl? What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, so I have a little video about the evolution of Batman so we can all get familiarized. Let's go ahead and watch. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> I need that here. Okay, you got POV on Alpha. I'm Leon on Beta. This new layer of armor. Tell me, do you bleed? Nice. nice. Cool. So, as you can see at the very beginning, Batman had kind of a cloth or fabric cowl, and over the years it just kind of progressed and got cooler and cooler and cooler, and more gizmos and gadgets were added. So, the newer ones is the one that we're modeling ours after. Sound good? Yeah. You think yeah. we can do it? Absolutely. <laughs> The DC Universe and all the DC fans are ruthless. So accuracy, making sure this looks right and it's as authentic as possible is going to be so imperative with this one. You're a new face. I Hi, am a new I'm face. Shay. Hi, Dusty. Dusty, very yeah. nice to meet you. I'm gonna be helping design, model, fabricate the helmet. Cowl, I'm sorry. Cowl. <laughs> it's basically a helmet. And are you assisting with that? Do you yes. have like the same role? We okay. are the fabrication team. My name is Mitchell Hartwell. I'm in the simulation and visualization degree program here at Full Sail. I came to Full Sail to originally do games, but then I decided to move on to more of an engineering degree. So going into the last Hacker Labs, I was definitely ready for a big challenge with the physical engineering, and it definitely did not disappoint in that regard. But I think this one is definitely going to be a lot more difficult from a software engineering side. So I'm on the fabrication team, so I'm going to be on the electronics, the design, the modeling, the 3D printing, and in addition to that, I'm also the project manager. I'm kind of like the drill sergeant on this project. My name is Dusty Langberg. I'm in the computer animation degree program. I'm in my second month. I really like doing animating, modeling, stuff like that. Being the youngest one here, I obviously have the least amount of experience, but uh, I think it'll be a good challenge for me, and if anything, it'll allow me to push myself farther than I've been able to. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing the outside, but I want to know more about the tech, so let me go check in with the tech team. All right, yeah. sounds good. Hey, you're back. What's going on? My name is Abhijit Malamkar. I'm in mobile development. And this is my third Hackers Lab. We did the Iron Man series. That was amazing. And the last hoverboard. And now this time, we are doing a Batman call. I'm Jonathan Ribeiro. I'm in the game development program. I've been here for about two years now. I love games. Batman Arkham Asylum for Xbox. It was one of the greatest games I'd ever played. I'm really looking forward to working with all this new technology. Probably what I'm worried about as well, having to learn all of it. I'm Caliber Seraphim. I graduated from the game development degree at Full Sail, uh, and now I'm in the game design master's degree. I'm from this state, I'm from Florida, specifically South Florida, near the beaches and everything. When I was growing up, my parents used to watch the Batman movies, and I was, you know, in the same room. I think at one point during Halloween, I even dressed up as Batman, so it's kind of like a nostalgia for me. I'm probably going to uh, contribute to the use or interface, maybe a little bit of the speech recognition API, maybe a little bit of the facial rec. We have to come up with a timeline of how we're gonna get this done. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring over my trusty whiteboard. I think it makes sense to kind of break things down by week and by team. Okay, so let's start with week one, and let's talk about the UI team first. What are some goals week one for the UI team specifically? A basic UI uh, to test facial recognition. Fab team. 
We definitely want to have a solid plan for fabrication. Week two. Uh, a criminal database to actually look up the things that are detected. Oh, smart, I like that. Anything else um, UI-wise? Yeah, and then uh, computer vision to identify objects around Batman. This time it will tell you like it's a computer there or it's a human there. So week two, we should probably have a basic model at least made, have something built so we can Make sure we test the electronic so like stuff like printing. that. printing. We'll probably use foam. So week three. We are planning to integrate speech recognition, contacting Batcave. And see, when you contact the Batcave, that's when you can tell Alfred to order pizza. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really important that when we contact the Batcave, the Batcave has access to call pizza because pizza is the bottom line here. Priority number one. It's gonna be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing. Do you guys, I need everybody to like focus here. You got I think it. we got it, yeah. <laughs> All right. Week three, you know, we have a prototype. We've been able to work with it for a little bit. I think it's time to start putting electronics in there. Week four, home stretch. Week four, we'll be just debugging. Because hopefully, nothing will go wrong and there will be no bugs, right? Yeah. Well, we should definitely have our final uh, final cowl done. Yeah. We'll probably be field test. Should probably that. be done right around there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we got to be ready to field test with the hacksmith. Oh yeah, that's right. The hacksmith is coming back. But I think this looks like a good plan. All right, let's do this. Let's, let's yeah. get started. What are some challenges that you think you might face? I see what you did there. <laughs> you see what I did there? How are we going to make this be inside of this without looking stupid? That is going to be our biggest task. If we get that plan done by today, then I'll consider today successful. I know we got a lot of comments last time when we made the Iron Man helmet. They wanted us to disassemble the HoloLens and break it down so we could fit it in there. Is that what we did here? Yeah, sort of. We can use this one for testing, but we do have a new one that does not look so uh, broken. I think one of our biggest challenges for this project from the fabrication side of things is instead of trying to hide all of this futuristic equipment, we're trying to integrate it and make it look like it belongs. So, day one, we're trying to get a solid plan of how we're going to accomplish being able to put this thing on while it also fitting the HoloLens and not looking stupid. We've kind of come up with this idea of having two individual parts. We have one part which is going to be going actually on your head. That's gonna be the part that's actually like touching you. Okay. And we're gonna put all of our electronics or attempt to put all of our electronics in that piece. We can have, have all the electronics kind of hidden within and then just drop this over to look cool but we're gonna try and actually integrate the HoloLens into it so it looks a little more sleek. Hopefully what we'll have is a helmet that is not much bigger than the HoloLens so it doesn't look bobble-heady. Like I can fit my whole hand in here. We might have to make sure we are working to fit everything that we want into it. I wanna make sure we focus on making what we can really good. I'm working on the UI for all this stuff. I'll be working on the database card, the translation API compass, and then the maps. And they will be working on the uh, implementation in 3D space. I don't know how the lie detector is gonna work out, but I'm pretty confident that we'll figure it out. You know how people stutter a lot. They say, uh, if they're lying, they, they have to think about stuff. I was planning on making it so that each of those factors that we caught would add to a multiplier that would basically increase the chance that they were lying or not. We're going to do some research on which emotions people are most likely to exhibit if they're lying. Concerns, mostly the time constraint. I think that's yeah. any game developer's concern is time. We have a whole list of things that we need to get accomplished. Hopefully we're going to be able to get this all done in four weeks. Hopefully they can do it. Let's find out. Don't mind me. I'm just going to wrap this around your head real quick. We successfully deployed just a base uh, project with a sphere in it. Okay, oh, it's glitching around a bit. I screwed something up. I'm not getting any feedback. Nothing's going on, which is why I'm frustrated. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode of Hacker Labs, but we are just getting started. So make sure you like and subscribe and click on that bell below to turn on notifications so you can know when the next episode is here. We'll see you then.